want to be wealthy? Do you want to be in control of your finances? Do you feel like you mostly get financial advice from people who are trying to sell you a bank's product? If your answer is yes to any of these questions, then stay tuned because you are at the right place. Welcome to Money Congos, a club committed to helping people achieve financial freedom by providing education and guidance on personal finance and investments. We have a group of experts who share their knowledge and give practical advice with no strings attached. At Money Congos, we have candid, mature conversations about wealth, how to create it, grow it, and protect it. We share our experience and encourage our audience to share this and ask questions. Join us every Thursday on Clubhouse at 7 p.m. GMT. We also have book discussions that bring out practical lessons. So far, we have read dumb things smart people do with their money, The Richest Man in Babylon, and The Millionaire Next Door. Most importantly, we have one-on-one -on -one financial coaching sessions where we guide individuals through setting financial goals, retirement planning, budgeting, investments, risk management, and so many more areas. The goal is to get you to financial independence from whatever income level you're at. Follow us on Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, Facebook, and Clubhouse. The handle is at moneyconvosgh or send us an email at moneyconvosgh at gmail.com so we get you started on your journey to financial freedom. Now that you're all caught up, let's head into our next conversation. Well, hello everyone. Welcome to today's conversation. Hi Jennifer, how are you doing? Hi Ellie Kim, I'm doing well, thank you. Are you? I'm doing great, I'm doing great. All right, so are you excited for this? It's a, it's a bit nostalgic, our last discussion. Yeah on yeah. this book yeah um, so it's um mm -hmm. it's sad because it seemed as if we we're now getting into the book no more mm -hmm. ending. but yeah it's it was quite an interesting read so oh. i'm glad to be bringing it to a close yeah what about you yeah i'll miss it i was really enjoying the psychology of money seriously mm -hmm. I was playing a lot of uh, games on my mind so uh i I learned a lot. It, it, it was quite a humbling experience. Um, there are many, there are certain things that I got reinforced, you know. And I think reading this book and, of course, engaging with Money Convos to made me do something. This month, I, I have a standing budget, right? And I review it every few weeks, every two weeks, and then just before payday or when payday comes, right? But this time, before payday came, I was I did the budget and I was eager. So immediately it hit my account. I was already in town, just started paying, moving money to where money needs to go. So that when all that is left is left, you know. And I guess it's, it's part of the reason why we tell people, you know, spend some time with us at Money Convos, go through these books, you know, and it helps condition your mind, you know. So it's I think it I, I owe this this month's financial discipline to this book. So um yeah. I, I, I'm really grateful for this book and I'm grateful for the time we've been spending together here having these discussions and with the people who join in with their comments and all that. Mm. So, um, yeah, it's mm. all too soon it will come to an end, but we have another book which I would announce um, if you had followed that, if, yeah, to our audience, if you followed our Twitter for a while, we posted the list of books. So um, the next book will be coming up. I'll, I'll, let's, let's keep it as a surprise at the end of this uh, this conversation right so stay tuned and hear how the next book in the in the at the ending all right so jenny let's uh, move into today's conversation and chapter 19 it says all together now what we've sorry just a second uh, wait, okay all right what we've learned about uh pardon me the parts the last part keeps evading me so i just read it from my phone and it says what we've learned about the psychology of your own money interesting one there so jenny do you want to get us started on this point yeah so this um chapter seemed like a summary of everything that we've 
read before. And so the writer was, the author was bringing it home for us. And I think this really goes to people who are professionals in any field. And the way he made the parallel was that doctors, and I, I think I have, I know somebody who's a doctor and I see how he behaves. So I know this, this to be true. Doctors can uh, cure somebody, like give you a very, very potent path to the um, like to getting back to your health when you are sick but they themselves oh they'll be there inshallah they'll just be there to the, the the thing decides to leave them so the um, Jenny, was, may, yes. may i chip in on that on that uh, joke yes. right or that point um so the a doctor friend was visiting us some years ago and he's like oh we were at his place and he's like he's not feeling well he took some drug, was it tricylicate or something? And he just took the bottle to his head and he just turned it. And I'm like, won't you measure it? Are you just going to? I was like, I know 5 ml, I know 10 ml. Don't worry, you'll be fine. You'll be fine. <laughs> anyway, please continue. Yeah, so they sort of are very passionate about other people, their patients, um, following their strict and a straight and narrow path to becoming well but they themselves really can't be bothered when it comes to themselves and so this sort of shows the parallel with other profession professionals such as um, let's say financial advices oh we can tell you what you need to do to become rich but for us to swallow that pill and decide to do it for ourselves most of the time you would um, see that it's not true. And when the author mentioned that sometimes people who manage funds, very, very few of them invest in their own funds. And it's very, very true. I've done this um, thing before. When I was in um, when I was in retail in Data Bank, I used to like, oh, like my, my office members, I went and see, oh, nobody had any fund anywhere. I'm like, are ah, you always telling people to invest, 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 but you are not investing for yourselves. So sometimes you can be preaching the gospel, ah, but then you forget to get on the work on yourself. And before you realize other people have gotten wealthy and you were left behind because you weren't minding your own business like the way you were minding other people's businesses. So this is sort of like a wake-up call, a clarion call for everybody that no matter what it is that you're doing, if you are giving people advice that you are not taking yourself, this is your chance to take that advice to yourself and grow your wealth. Thank you. Great. Take the advice. And uh, yes, uh, a question has been issued to all of us um, financial ad uh, finance professionals. Uh, we need to follow the advice. And I see Mimi in the audience, and she's, she must also be looking in the mirror. So Mimi, over to you too, right? Yeah. Okay, so um, speaking of following the advice, let's ask, um, what are, what's some of the advice? And the, the like you mentioned, this chapter is like a summary, and then the next chapter is his his how he applies it so in in, in terms of a summary right let's take intense just um lessons that we learned for me i would talk first about save just save all right just save okay and i think that's the biggest lesson for me it's and I'll, I'll, I'll issue a caveat. You know, as money convos, when we say save, we really mean invest. Just go and hide the money is what we are saying. Go and put the money safe. That's what we mean by save. So not, not putting in a savings account, no. As money convo, save means go and invest. So mm -hmm. invest. Just invest. Preferably a small portion into financial assets. I know there's real estate and all. But any investment you do, just do it, right? And the book says you don't need a specific reason to save. It's great to save for a car or a down payment or a medical emergency, all that. But saving for things that are impossible to predict or define is the best reason to save. See, there are many things that we say, oh, God forbid, this won't happen to me. I'll never fall sick. I won't do this. Okay, fine. You there's is looking at it as negative, right? Okay, okay, yeah. fine. I can assure you those things would happen. 
So in terms of the downside things, what could go wrong? Save and also I just add get insurance, right? I had a conversation with Prince, one of our main uh, uh, people at Money Confus on our insurance expert just yesterday about invest about insurance. So there's that. So the downside things in the, uh, get insurance and save. Now, even on the positive side, because of compounding interest, yeah, putting away money is so important. Even if you don't know that you go and buy it you went by this or that or you've bought your car you've gotten married you've had your children just invest and oh wow i love this point mimi has just dropped in the comments see for unknown opportunities in future and i'll give you a good example when covid happened um, in march april the markets were going down and i managed me, jennifer and i we manage investments for high net worth individuals and i called a client in eurobond yields were normally around seven eight percent but in terms of covid it went all the way up to 13 percent that is more than like that's more than 50 percent more income you'll be making so i called this client and you know he's like i i come for the money just mm -hmm. like that and i'm not mean mean kasika kitua hundreds of thousands of not our local currency okay went for it physical no if yeah or he did a bank transfer something but we got the money other clients too like that opportunities we got the money look you may think you want to spend the money today i was talking to someone today i was like oh let me spend it you know she lost some family recently life is short let me spend it i'm like i love this point mimi has brought save for unknown opportunities in the future i'll leave it at that jenny you want to comment or, ju or jump to your own lesson um, so I'll just say something briefly on this and then jump to mine. So the, I, I think the emphasis on saving cannot be overemphasized. Like it cannot be overemphasized because seriously, there are a thousand and one things that um, you do not know that you would like will maybe for you, which become an emergency, which become an op missed opportunities that um, as Mimi said and as Elikem has said, that may you may not get just because you weren't prepared for so i think it is good that you don't have you decide that oh i'm not just saving or investing to buy a car to buy a house i just have money and i'm trying to um um stop or suppress my expenditure so then if i'm exp um, suppressing my expenditure the difference between my revenue and then all my income and the amounts that I'm spending every month, it is the difference. So where can I put it? Because it is it gives you a plethora of um places that you can go. Ellie can please go on. I'm coming. Okay, great. So um for me, another point I have is avoiding the extreme ends of financial decisions and i think you did a good a good number on this when we were discussing it in that time where you mentioned that we shouldn't uh, we talked about not taking extreme stances and the, the reality is people change so you can't be here making decisions for your future self fact is you will change your mind now when you change your mind you don't want to be caught out you still want to position yourself in a way that if you if you are in the middle ground, you, you can shift. You know, you can you can give yourself that flexibility. And I use driving on the N1 for example. You could be in the fastest lane, in in the innermost lane. There are three lanes along most of it. Sometimes it gets to four, but there are three lanes, right? And you could be in the fastest lane where you are taking advantage of the opportunity to speed. They are going up, going all the way, right? But we know how some people can misbehave and jump out of the media. Or there may be a car spoiled there. And in that case, you have only one option. Go to the middle lane. Or you could be in the outer lane, and that's where some cars could be spoiled. Or some people are on the shoulder and trying to merge onto the road. So you just go it slowly, go it slowly over there, and um, you, just, you just be going slowly. Okay, fine. You can do that, all right? But if you are in the middle ground, when there's opportunity to go fast, you go fast. If something happens and you have to change lanes, now you have two options, go left or go right. But if you are in 
one of the outer in the innermost lane or in the outer lane, you are stuck. So it is the same in, in money. If if you if you hold yourself rigid, you say, okay, I, I want to be all, I want to go all in, I can take risks, you go and do equities, you go and lock up your money, something that you can't take out your money for like the next five years. When an opportunity comes or you have to pay school fees or you have to do something, you didn't leave anything liquid. So what do you do? You know, that kind of thing. Don't lock yourself into extreme ends of financial decisions. That's another point I picked up. Jenny, you want to jump in? Yeah. So the seriously not um, putting yourself in, locking yourself in one corner because the system that anything can change. And I think COVID already gives us a very glaring example of how the world can do a 180 from where it was to where it is now. Imagine if, um, imagine the technological advancement we had pre-COVID and what we have now. Like if you are boxing yourself in one corner and thinking that this is going to be you for the rest of your life, making a change is very difficult. And as human beings AJ, we get set in our ways. So it is very difficult for you to be changed or be malleable when you are so set in your ways in a very extreme corner than when you are in the middle. At least if you are in the middle, you are set in your ways. As Elikem said, it doesn't take you long to drive from the middle lane to the inner lane and back. And I want to give you a small um, analogy. So I'm learning how to drive. And my um, my instructor says I tend to steer too hard if I'm fighting with it. So when he tells me to change lanes on the highway, He's like, just turn the steer small and the thing will go. So I'm just thinking like, if you're in the middle lane, you don't have to do anything. Like it's just small and then the tides and then your your um, habits and all will be able to guide you to a, a better place than if you are somewhere very, very far away. So please aim to be in the middle every time. Thank you. Great, Jenny. Great, but any, any for from you to any other um, summary points that really hit you hard. So, um, one thing that I learned was that no matter how much you earn, you will never be able to build wealth unless you can put on how a lid on how much fun you have in the short term in favor of long-term plans. So I think it's circling back to the investing, but here um, probably has to deal with the um, the attitudes that guide our spending. Let's say you want to show people that you have arrived. Hey, have they seen you and all the money that you have and the things that you can buy? No. Um, if you can, if you can rein in your, the edges you have, to let's say show people that you have wealth or do something for people to see or something just rein it in and then be focused on your goal and little by little poco a poco my ceo has something he likes to say poco a poco yeah you'll be able to get to your financial plan that you have in future yeah thank you true and i can relate with that in fact that that part is is, is the last sentence in a certain paragraph and if i they just read that and it says less ego more wealth saving money is the gap between your ego and your income and wealth is what you don't see so wealth is created by suppressing what you could buy today in order to have more stuff or more options in the future no matter how much you earn you will never build wealth unless you can put a lid on how much fun you can have with your money right now today you know on a lighter note uh, you know thinking about the future i think in a previous session on on the thursday conversation i mentioned that in um in the way i'm planning my career maybe i can afford to buy the bins that i want in maybe two three years and you know i've, I've been i've been shooting for like an uh, an e63 S, an AMG E63S, Aha, that one. But I thought about it and I was like, you know what, you are start with um, a C, C43S AMG. It's, it's okay, that one too is okay. This is half the cost of the E, but it's all AMG, it's all the bands, you know, so we we'll take it like that, you know, anyway, that's on the light handle, but let's let's get my head out of the cloud, right? Bringing it back on the ground. Um, 
how how does this translate into real life things in the last week especially when you know they are getting towards the end of the month and there's your 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 money tank is on empty it's not yet finished but it's in the last quarter bar or the last few bars and then it's going down towards empty and uh, the light starts flashing you know you are late penny wise pound foolish you are the penny wise stage and i i pause and i that's where you can think a lot, very clearly about money so i i want maybe i want to just buy a snack and i'm like i really need a snack or i could use that same money to buy a proper meal oh wait i could just go and microwave something in the fridge right and yes. actually think about it and i'm like it's the little things and these are some of the lifestyle things and i strongly encourage the young people on this conversation you know it's it's these small ages that is oh charlie oh, but i hear yeah, what is this what's that but look, it adds up yes. it adds up it has a funny way of adding up not just in the money terms but because you were comfortable buying some shawarma you didn't need to buy some dessert you didn't need to buy some donuts for 30 cities that you didn't need to buy because you wanted a dessert fine you could have gone for the one cd option <laughs> Polo. <laughs> I bought polo recently. Anyway, you could have gone for the one CD option or something, or you went for that chocolate digestive, my guilty pleasure. That's 30, which is now 30 CDs for 15 CDs. Um, we hear about you for that option. <laughs> yes, you will hear about it until the prices go down or a CD gets a hold of itself. Yeah, right. Instead, you could keep hold yourself and not get into all those things, but. It's about the mindset. You're okay doing it. Today you are buying something extra. Tomorrow is next thing. And by the time you realize it, it's just little, little things gone. Little, little things gone. And yes, you may be saving 20% of your income already and thinking it's okay. But guess what? You could actually do 25. You could do 30%. And you would be, by sacrificing those little, little things, you be you could, you could, you're not even giving much up much enjoyment because you just eat it and you're done and you move on right but it's really about the habit that you're building for yourself so i strongly encourage you whenever you feel like going out to buy a drink just drink some chilled water so one of the reasons why at home we don't like go to and do grocery shopping and buy like a carton of drinks and keep it in the fridge like when i was growing up we used to do because just yesterday i was thinking ah, i wouldn't mind to going to get a drink from the shop behind the house but just going out of home was such a chore instead of going out of home i was like you know what drinks do i already have and just me do it what the drinks i had at home you know so yeah that's that's something in in terms of the habits you want to build up the the lifestyle expenses they add up and they will catch up to you trust me downgrading your lifestyle downgrading it from whatever level you have to where you is sensible for you man it's tough it's tough and speaking of lifestyle foreshadowing the next chapter i love the lifestyle of the author morgan house i was amazed i was amazed we'll get there right but jenny yeah. any last words on this uh concluding so, or this summary chapter before we move on yeah so i just want to talk about the lifestyle um mm -hmm. do you remember the conversation we had where i was saying that i i could live Live on like 300 cents and I was in national service. <laughs> yes, but with inflation, we adjusted. You just doubled it for inflation purposes. Yes. So, so a background. So Six hundred. Um, mm -hmm. <laughs> a background. I, um, when I was in national service, it's the national. I was still able to live on. 300 cities. Okay, granted, I used to live in Sunyani by then. So I was able to really invest and save all my money and everything, paid for my GSC um, certification and all from that money I'd been saving from my national service. But today, I cannot fathom. Like, I don't, under, I don't, I don't remember how I was able to do it. Like how I was able to manage that today, it's almost as if as my income was growing, my lifestyle, yes, maybe because the lifestyle tax was growing alongside it. And I'm really trying to rein it in now because I, I realized that my area doesn't have water like that. So sometimes the hassle for you to go and look for water, come and cook and all, and there's both food there. And before you realize, you see some of your money to spend to chop both food. <laughs> so, 
It's really simple, like serious, like little little things. Cook and wash dishes. Be, yeah. Oh, cook and wash the dishes. So it doesn't have to be anything extraordinary, but they add up. They really add up. So it's not always that it has to be something shape or something like oh an extraordinary meal. Sometimes you can forfeit something in uh, in support of your future plans. Thank you very much. Charlie, Jenny, I also have to chip in. I had a rude awakening when um, sometime last week, you know, salary was paid and I was like, how am I distributing it? I had done my budget and I have some quite rains, some large expenses to cover, you know, it's that time when you have to pay those advances and those kind of things. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, I get it, I get it. But you know what? Still, what's going as normal monthly expenses? Christ, it's still huge. But there was a time when I was not making half of this. <laughs> there was a time I was not making half of this. What is what's going on? I was like, you know what? This month, not this month of March, I am going to squeeze myself and I will figure it out. You will. The, money, the money can be will, I will invest it in. if push comes to shove at least I can go and withdraw it from my M fund but that push should not come to shove yeah. Yeah. so we'll figure it out so this month is all about figuring it out right <laughs> let's get back there we have to see. We're all with you <laughs> thank you thank you so I guess we can say this month say no to lifestyle inflation as Mimi has put it there say no to lifestyle inflation I'll put that as a banner. Okay, speaking of lifestyle inflation, let's look at the life of this author, Morgan Housel. He fought lifestyle inflation. He, he really said did. effectively, he is what, in his 50s or so, and he's still living like he was in his 20s. 20s, yeah. And I'm not saying living your low 20s, no, like living in a small space, small budget, and I even love his net assets. So we'll get to that. Jenny, what do you think about this, this man? So I really like I really like this, and I like the fact that his parents embodied it for him, so he learned it very early on. So i like to give a background on this. The author's father was an, um, a doctor, and the man became a doctor when he was 40. And as the author was growing up, the man was in medical school so imagine supporting a wife and kids i think three kids if i'm not mistaken on a, and then supporting somebody through medical school so they were they were really managing a lot when they were growing up and by the time the man became a doctor and they had they were well to do and everything the core um, character of frugality had already been um, embedded in their um, DNAs, and so they did nothing changed. Their their parents were still as they were, and all of that. So, um, they it just afforded them to retire early. So apparently, his the author's father one day got up, I think around sixty or sixty five, and decided that medicine isn't what he thought it was, and he's tired, and he had been able to invest enough to be able to buy his freedom from um the work he didn't want to do again so that was it he after one morning and decided to quit so the other looking at his parents that are ah seriously like i should be able to have that um choice yes the choice to decide that i do not want to do this again and i want my life to take this trajectory and stop money shouldn't prevent me from deciding to do something that i am set on and so his purpose in life was to become financially independent. So everything was was um, everything he did, all the plans and spending habits was in line with that goal. So when he and his wife met, they they sat, they moved in together before they got married, and then they he said he sat her down and. He said, oh, ma madam, this is what we are doing in this life. Do you agree? And then they hashed everything out. And then they did that. Of course, it was hard. Elikem, you can, uh, I if you can remember, he said it was really hard. There were yep. times when yep. certain edges would overpower him, like, hey, look at what people my age are doing. But the goal of financial independence yeah so something like that and he and his wife were each other's accountability partners so they're able to um stand in this um, journey together and they were able to achieve it so 
yeah, his 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 life is a really telling example of how he was able to and some of the decisions that he took. He said, if you tell financial planners, they will say no. But then it's felt it's it felt very right in what objective he had for his life, and so he was able to do it. Yeah. Ah man, you know, and it's and one of the things I like about what he was saying is he had the humility to say. He doesn't advise this for everyone. Yeah. Your path will be different. So follow your path, right? And so I went in ready to not listen to what he's saying, but I must say, I must say, hmm, I'm I'm moved by some of the things, right? And and I just like to touch on a few of the things um, uh, that he said. One of the things he said is, Achieving some level of independence does not rely on a doctor's income. You know, people say, well, I need to earn a high amount of income, you know. But it's like, no, it's mostly a matter of keeping your expectations in check and living below your means. You can make 100,000 CDs a month, but if you spend all the 100,000 CDs a month and borrow even some more, you know, because some people, as they, as they earn more, then they are born, oh, that means I can take a car loan, I can take a mortgage, I can do this. Oh, I, I, but I get a credit card. I know Ghana, we don't do credit card but like that, but you, you was woo free, or you say, oh, don't worry, you know you've run out, but you go and buy it that next month you should pay. So you're already spending money, you've not earned. Okay, no problem. So it seems crazy. I'm saying 100,000. Look, I can even say 10,000, and people are like, oh my God, there are people earning 10,000. Mm, there are people earning 10,000. Trust me, there are people also any hundred thousand, right? Yeah. But some of them do who can finish it. No, imagine that hundred thousand you are in it, and then you buy some nice Mercedes Benz or some BMW. The engine, the monthly servicing alone is like five thousand. They live in a big house. We'll be paying gardeners and all those things. Oh, the money they can finish. Let's let's just agree on that. I can finish in no time. But mm-hmm. also imagine someone who is earning just five thousand. I know for a lot of people, five thousand is okay. Right? I know five thousand mm, that's a bit much, right? Okay, but you earn five thousand, you live on only three thousand, and you save two thousand. That is for you save forty percent of your income, and that's two thousand. You are able to grow it, grow it, grow it. But you know, so the person with the hundred thousand, oh. What is 2,000? Oh, I'll make 2,000 in a few days. Oh, in a few days, I can put 2,000 aside. Every day, postponing, postponing, postponing. In no time, in no time, you'd have passed the person because it's not just about your income. It's about mm-hmm. how much of it you keep, all right? So, and how are you able to keep? By not spending. So check your expectations, you know? Check your expectations. Don't um don't think that oh people I, i'm earning so much people think i'm a big boy you know people think i'm, I'm earning 10 k. I i should be able to go to take some people out for dinner every now and then you know happy hour no, 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 no. calm down calm down okay calm down okay jenny any other uh parts that yeah. hit you so he was like the it, the it's not as you said it's not how much you earn what will make you wealthy is your money attitude your psychology about money so i think it was all boiling down to this point that you can earn one billion ghana cities or is dollar equivalent every month but that is not going to make you rich it is your attitude when the money gets in your hand that is going to get you wealthy do you decide that instead of um going out here i'm going to do this and i'm going to put my money here or here, there and he gave us an example when we we're starting the book about a gardener who nobody knew anything about him he was just a regular very very ordinary gentleman like he, if you put him in a crowd and then you tell somebody to pick a billionaire he's probably the last person the person will decide that is a millionaire but then when he died, he was the one that was a millionaire. So it is not how much you make. It is how much you're able to have. And your best, best, best friend when it comes to money or investing is compound interest. The very, very best time you should have started investing was when you were born. 
but now uh, this is the fact where you weren't you, 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 let's say your parents didn't invest for you when you were born so if you haven't started yet the next best time is today so that you have some time ahead of you and then whatever money you are putting down can compound on your behalf and then give you um returns later so let it work for you yeah great compounding interest letting it work for you right and let me just hit on uh well i was going to mention something about compounding all right and okay you know what I'll, I'll come back to that right let me mention something that the author talked about where he said uh something contrarian so we mentioned i mentioned that some of the things he said will not work for him it will not work for just anybody so what works for him is what he's doing so i'll mention one of the things he owns his home Right. He owns his home, and he actually said later on in the chapter that effectively all their net worth is a house, a checking account, and some Vanguard index funds. All right, so these are some of the contrarian things that he does. Nothing fancy, and Jennifer, you know, we're looking at some fancy statements that one of yeah, our yeah. amazing, amazing, beautiful things. <laughs> yeah, but this person said a house, a checking account and some Vanguard index funds. Now the house part is where we want to focus. They did not take a mortgage. They bought the house outright. outright. And red flags, red flag. I mean, I would, I would encourage a mortgage, right? Use, use other people's money, especially in the US at a time when interest rates were cheap, right? Jenny, what, what do you think? Yeah, yeah. It was yeah. more beneficial to invest your money and then use other people's money. Exactly. But here's what he said, and it goes back to one of the chapters earlier. The difference between being logical and realistic you could follow the numbers but you also need to be realistic what will work right and he said and this is what he said he doesn't try to defend his decisions on paper is defenseless all right but it works for us he's speaking for his family it works for us we like it that's what matters good decisions aren't always rational at some point you have to choose between being happy and being right right you know a contrarian view right from him so that's another thing i picked up i'm not i'm, I'm still going to do a mortgage if i can have, if i can get one but i just thought it is worth noting um what he thought on this point um another issue he mentioned was about stocks active as active, active uh, stock picking yeah. yes and it's it's both it's, it's related to what you were saying earlier on about compounding interest being your best friend and he said Charlie Manga put it well. The first rule of compounding is to never interrupt it unnecessarily. Why is he talking about this? He said um, uh, he's saving, right? And people ask, what are he saving for? His portfolio has to... Yeah. Come again? Sorry, when Sorry. you asked what's, um, why is he doing that, I was saying that his portfolio has 20% mm -hmm. cash. So, yeah, ah, I'll just ah. keep it in for you. Yeah. Good point. 20% cash. I'm like, that's just 20% of your money that you are it's not cash. investing. Yeah. Yeah, 20% of your money that is not working for you. It sounds outrageous. Yeah. But he explained it well. And he said this, following from what Charlie Manga said, and he said compounding interest, what happens if you have an emergency? What happens if you have an opportunity you want to take? You have to go and take out your money. Remember from mm -hmm. some chapters ago, we talked that we learned about a lady who was able to, um, who didn't touch her money in down times. But yeah. COVID happens, oh, I, you are tight on one, one side, so you have to come and take our money. And I, I take this example from, I won't mention my institution's name at this point because it works in their favor. Well, um, be, some people took very risky investments. Yes, and yes. When things weren't going well in the 2018 when financial services were in crisis now they had to come to where the money was safer and go and sort plug all the holes that their other um, places created you know and now i come to disrupt your plants so why not keep that money safe because look, if you are in your 20s you are in your 30s probably in your 30s you by now you realize that things happen in life why not just prepare leave some money somewhere that is liquid. And fortunately, especially in Ghana, there are these 
money market mutual funds that can so you can access your money in a day or same day or the next day but still mm. make a pretty penny on it and 15 18 percent mm. so decent right so take advantage of that so that when you're growing stocks you don't touch it man i remember when my epac was going down my equity mutual fund going down 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 mm, we looked at it it's just come up a little it's come back up so I, I hope i can watch it rise <laughs> anyway anyway without yeah. much ado Jen, do you have any more any last points on yeah. how the clients um how this um author writes his uh talk that's his own money i was quite surprised at the simplistic way it was it's like as you said his house some few checking accounts and then vanguard index funds like somebody who is on wall street no no S seriously you just need to have a plan and then look for the what can help you so it's good that let's say if you decide that this is your objective you get a financial planner who can make something make it so, such that you understand it if it has to be as simple as this for you to be able to sleep at night and this is another thing he said that wherever you are investing your money at the end of the day when you're going to sleep be able to rest knowing that your money is secure for you so understand whatever it's that you are putting your money in and appreciate that it is working for you there as you your objectives are and then you'll be fine yeah good points right and speaking of simplicity the last thing i'll say about this is as an investment professional i analyze a lot of companies I look at a lot of things, but ask me, do I own any bond? I do not own a single bond. I don't. There's only one individual stock I own. That was during the M MTN IP, I was like, no, this is so good and I'm allowed. And, and granted, part of the reason is, you know, in the, in the investment profession, we usually have to make, for me to stay on the street and narrow without the shadow of any doubt, before I make an invest a direct investment decision, I need to have given my clients an opportunity to do it. You know, it's too much too much hassle. You know, just indirect mutual funds. Yeah. So my most of my investments are in mutual funds. Now clients come to me, and Jenny, which client was this? Was 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 I on this call with you? And the client was like, oh, "Where should I put my money?" And I think I told the person, "Oh, you're already in the best place, in front. You are, it's, considering your needs." You're already there it's fine it's yeah. fine or I, I think it was a, a different call right mm -hmm. and people ask me these things oh don't you have any other investments i've been doing this investment for a long time i've been doing this investment don't you have any other oh, I see. it's not fashion when it comes to investment it's not fashion it's no fashion it's not you're not looking for what's hot find what works if you found what works what again are you looking for calm down it's not fashion okay take what works and stick with it if it stops working then you can move on but if it works don't change that winning team please it, it leads a lot of people to oh, what's hot then oh yeah there was a point when guess what was get guess what was hot at a certain point men's gold yeah you don't want to just jump to what's hot so have a plan think long term and what to work for you you don't need to have so many different different investments if you can consolidate then yes you don't want to put all your eggs in one basket but keep it simple and it'll work for you you know all mm -hmm. right the next the last chapter which is not really a chapter right mm -hmm. was is um, about is a postscript and i love it i love it a Me brief too. history of <laughs> why the u.s consumer thinks the way they do you know what for this one if you don't read anything, if you don't want to read the whole book, what we will say is we won't, this one won't jump inside it too much. No, 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 we won't talk too much about it. I'll just, we just take turns, just one point each, the most striking thing. And I'll encourage everyone, if you don't do anything at least you just come and read this postscript, right? It's a bit, a few, a couple of pages longer than other chapters, but it's, mm -hmm. it's, it talks about that defense that we all need to get, right? Because, we mentioned what our wealth is about. Our wealth is about how much of your income you can save. If you read this chapter, it will help you know how you can save a lot more of your income. Make you realize the things that are working on your mind that 
uh, that you are not aware of it. So Jennifer, what's mm. if you, what one thing would you say on this? So the one thing that I would say on this, no, this is an aside first. Before I come to the one thing that I'll say on it, that's I try to change it in. You are trying to change the thing in through. Don't worry. It's allowed. It's allowed. So <laughs> it's allowed. I just want to say that truly, 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 people's behaviors can be explained by their circumstances. So we are always saying, oh, consumerism, and we are we are always consuming, we are always consuming. It's other from a point. At first, people weren't like that. Now they are like that. How do we trace it? So yeah, truly, truly, you are not weird. Your behaviors can be explained by the experiences you've had. Yeah. Now, what I would want to um, be amazed at was how quickly it boomed. So for, for instance, um, I'd like to give a brief background here so that I won't go in deep, but we'll just whet your appetite. World War II happened. World War II ended when Japan, and you can add it, I say Japan like you do, ja, when Japan um, I think that's the right way to say it. Okay. Japan. When Japan surrendered and the America became victorious, this was in 1945. Prior to this, Everybody and their brother had been enlisted in the a, a male who is 80 years old. You were enlisted in the army. So imagine about 13 million males coming back uh, uh, between, let's say, 18 to roughly like 40. Uh, they said the average mean or the median age was, sorry, around 23. And all of these people were coming back because and the war had ended how were we going to feed them what were they going to wear what are they going to do so when they were thinking about this and uh, all of these things then they decided to cut interest rates for them so that they can borrow and like build houses and this is a, 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 a an economic cycle where if people are consuming, then businesses will be set up to feed the consumers. And that's how we make money. And when they buy, we plow back into the companies. We build better things for them. They collect more and come and buy. This built up so much that they were just borrowing and borrowing and borrowing to buy bigger things, to buy better things. And if you if you look at the history of America before pre-19, pre-Second World War, they weren't um like you could see the difference between the very rich like Rock, uh, john d rockefeller and vanderbilt and then the other people you could really see that oh <laughs> we are not in the same class but after second world war where oh uh, credit was you can come and borrow you can come and borrow people realize that ah like if i work small and i add a little more loans i like Elikem and I can be chilling in the same car and you will know that we have different backgrounds no you can't and that, that lifestyle was what held people, was just edging people on, edging people on. And of course, America as a capitalist industry will get more, will bring up more things to help you borrow more. And that's how now we are even at credit cards, where you can go to a, a store with something, money that you don't have, and spend as much as you have and decide to pay it um, later. So this has fed our consumerism nature. And so we are always looking at what can I, how can I spend somebody's money? How can I always spend somebody's money? Even on things that are not um, interest generating or and even sometimes that, that cannot be explained so rationally. So we are always just spending. And I think this, this wasn't actually even a lesson. It was just giving you an insight into if you are like that, why you behave the way you do. And if you think there's some way that you can change. Yeah, it was really enlightening. Great, 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 great. Uh, like, I like the example that you gave, and that was even going to be the point. Now we we see it as you can do what someone else is also doing, right? You just get, you have some small income and you support it with the loan, right? So um, that's a good point. Do you want to jump into your point? Or no, let, let me jump into, let me, let me mention this point, then you can mention any points that you picked up from this particular section. Okay. So... Like you explained, um, it was a, uh, there was a transformation in lifestyles. There was a transformation in wealth. Wealth boomed. And just by numbers, let me just, there was some 
numbers thrown. In the year 1945, the total U.S. household debt, or wait, I think, yes, the total U.S. household debt was 29.4 billion. In 1955, it grew to 125.7 billion. 1965, 331 billion. So over, a, and these are 10-year, 10-year jumps. Yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> man, things were getting better in terms of credit. Now, what, what did that allow people to do? They said the lifestyles of a small portion of keyword legitimately rich americans inflated the aspirations of the majority of americans whose incomes weren't rising so there came a time where because a lot of there was a time in the past in the six i think in the 60s 70s where things were booming and so things were getting better but in the 80s and 90s um not everyone was growing now, as the, the rich were getting richer, but everyone was just growing at a small, small piece. But by then, they've gotten used to values like equality, um, the American dream, living the lifestyle. So now everyone wants to keep up with the Joneses. Yeah. You want to live in the same neighborhood as the Jones, the Joneses. You want to drive the same cars as they do. And guess what? Now it's even worse. With social media, you can yeah, see the people that you went to school with driving a certain car. But you forget that. You and the person were in the same class, all right. But you, your chop box was empty. That person, their grandfather mm. was a chief somewhere. They have had money from back in Generations, the yeah. But because now you and him, oh, you have degree. You sat yeah. in the same class. The person is driving Prado. You want you that you can afford. Um, Jenny, what's the car that you like? The Vits, the Vits. <laughs> you can afford a nice 2020 model Vits, but no, you want to drive Prado because you don't see why. No, 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 calm down, calm down. Okay, don't compare. All right, and this is the culture of equality and togetherness that came out of the 50s to 70s innocently morphs into a keeping up with the Jones's effect. So in summary for me, guys, when it comes to our expenses, we really need to truly accept, accept where we are at, okay? And when we don't accept that, we go to what Mimi is talking about, what Jenny was talking about, quick loans. If people hear that, oh, you're working at an investment bank. Why is it here a bank? When a mother a loan, I'll come for a loan. I ain't say my mommy loan. <laughs> Won't you say you want to invest? No, it's loan you want. Yeah. Man. Hmm. Yeah. Nice, let's calm down. Okay, let's calm down. <laughs> okay, Jenny. Do you have any so, more points on this? Or I just want to read something. Sure. Um, go ahead. So while the top one percent have seen their incomes rise 18% over the last decade. Those in the middle have actually seen their incomes fall. For men with only high school degrees, the decline has been precipitous. 12% in the last quarter century alone. So you see, even though we were all living like we all had money, just a few people's incomes were growing. And I think even COVID made it very, very rampant. Just a few people's incomes went up like you, if you can take jeff bezos and um elon musk you can see the way their incomes really went up the rest of us weren't as fortunate but then our lifestyles are mimicking people that are earning terribly more than we are so seriously the the peer pressure to maybe is part like you really need to resist it because ellie can um, the lady I told you about last week, the last, I think, yeah, Tracy, I mentioned her when I was talking about resilience. When I was going to write my, my bag, and she was like, oh, she has a car at the back. I should go and put my, my bag in it. So when I was going, I thought it was an Elantra or a Corolla. And so she, had, she gave me the key, and I was doing ping, 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 ping. It was a Sonata. <laughs> And I was, I was, when I saw that, I was so surprised. <laughs> you see, but then 
you you don't know her you don't know her background you don't know anything you don't just look at her and decide that no 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 car loan is my portion in life and i'm going to buy a sonata or a prado it's not possible so you really need to look at your background and then the things that are reasonable with your background and where you want to get to in life in future and then plan accordingly and not let anything um, influence you negatively thank you thank you great 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 thank you jenny so on that bombshell it brings us to the end of this book, book. Yeah. don't judge a book by its cover <laughs> don't don't judge um, someone you see living a certain life live your own life do what works for you and make sure it's, it's really working for you don't delude yourself that it's working right yeah and um read this book if you haven't i think that's the last piece of advice i'll give read this book if you haven't and follow money convos everywhere on uh, facebook ig twitter get on clubhouse yeah. um and um soon starting next week um uh usual monday 7 p.m conversations our next book is the intelligent investor we are starting with chapters one to five so the usual monday pardon me i have to block this background okay pardon that yeah um so yes the intelligent investor amazing book um we will do a bit of a summary or introduction of this book in uh uh, Thursday, 7 p.m. conversation on Clubhouse. So get in there. But Jenny, do you know anything about this book you want to pick up on it? I think this, the psychology of money referred to it, right? At a point. Jenny, do you recall? Or it was a different book that we were reading that referred to it. So there was a part in there that he said, no. No, it was this book. So oh, um, this he, book? he put the line the author of um this book said people have people change and then circumstances change so don't box yourself i think that was when they were talking about boxing yourself can you hear me? yes i can hear you it was breaking a bit by i think i heard you yeah 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 so okay. there was a line in there about boxing yourself in great so starting so for four weeks in march we are looking at the intelligent investor. We all want to be intelligent investors, right? So please join in as we discuss this. If you want the book, um, feel free to message us and see how we can get you the book so that you read along. But hey, you don't need to read the book to um, to join us. Mm -hmm. Just come listen and we hope we'll be able to whet your appetite and you can fit it into your schedule in your own time. We are reading at yeah. quite a fast pace. So uh, we don't expect everyone to be able to keep up. So. Don't worry, just tune in. Or if you miss it too, we are on Facebook Watch, we are on YouTube Live. It will be coming to your podcast near you very soon. So right after this, I'll be processing it to put it on YouTube. And guess what? Next, The next book we are having, we are doing it on YouTube Live. So we tested out Facebook Live. It's been a good experience. And I like this interaction where I can see Shandorf is giving us some shout outs. So Jenny, Shandorf says you are doing a great job. So keep oh, it up. Thank you. <laughs> and Facebook also offered the fact that you don't need an account to watch it. But I have certain limiting features. Um, yes, we are using the, the free version of the software we are using, so we can only stream to one platform at a time. So, if you want to donate to get us to get the full version so that you can watch anywhere, message us and let's take your donation for the full version of the application. But we want to do YouTube and try that out. I think YouTube is an app anyone can access easily, and um, so we want to try that for the next book. So, don't expect to see us here on Facebook for the in March but rather on YouTube, we'll be sending those blasts out. So I hope I catch you there. Okay then, so um, without much ado, I hope to see you on Thursday on Clubhouse at 7 p.m. and also Monday on YouTube Live, where we discuss the intelligent investor. Jenny, any final words or it's just a bye-bye? Oh, I just say uh, um, I'm really excited to read this book because Benjamin Graham is 
a seasoned investment professional. This book was, um, Benjamin Graham wrote the book, I think in 18 something or 19 something, but then- It was 1950 something, I think. 1950 something, okay. And it's been relevant, relevant like that. And people are writing commentary on it, trying to get us mere mortals to understand it proper. <laughs> so it's a really interesting book. And I th I'm really excited to read it and talk about it, yeah. Uh, yes, oh, in fact, how could I even miss this? If you can see from the image I've put up, guess what? Warren Buffett wrote um, a major, uh, uh, I think the epilogue or an introduction, yeah, okay, yes, to the book, and he highly recommends this book. So, well, don't take my word for it, take Warren Buffett's word for it. Join us and um, lend a word, right? Okay, thank you so much, and I'll just leave you with this closing word from Money Convos. For taking the time to listen to our thoughts i hope you learned a thing or two and start practicing don't forget to follow us on twitter instagram clubhouse and facebook and subscribe to our youtube and podcast do tell a friend about money convos so we all become wealthy together talk to you soon bye